Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Today, I'm going to be talking about string breakage, the way you break strings. Us as stringers can tell actually what you're doing and how you're breaking the strings. Uh, for instance, if you bring that racket into me with that kind of break, well, I know you're hitting a lot of top. I know you're hitting the sweet spot um, well, and I know you're hitting hot, slightly high in the sweet spot, which is actually perfect. So that is what I would call a perfect break. So I get a, typically this kind of break happens with a guy, uh, man, high school kid, college kid, um, with a consistent break just in this neighborhood uh, never in the center though. It never happens squarely in the center because they're coming over the ball with top. So impact usually happens here or there, but never in the middle. It can go as far as here sometimes, over here, like four strings or fifth strings across because it, it impacts slides to the, slightly to the middle and takes off. And as you can see, it's slightly on the higher side too, right? So the real sweet spot is actually higher in the racket because we want the ball to stay a little longer in the string bed. And that's how you would control it. It's hitting a little on the higher side. Having the ball stay a little longer, having the racket flex a little more, you spinning the ball, and then the ball taking off, right? So that, this is a, this is a modern day break, just like that. Now, lately, a lot of people have been bringing in their rackets and it's looking like that. So kids, whoever, adults are breaking the cross. Now this happens to be NXT going both ways. Typically when a child brings me this one, meaning a teenager, it's usually poly on the main. And usually the poly is clean, meaning there's no notches, right? and they're basically forcing the cross to break. But how are they forcing the cross to break? When this first started happening about 12 years ago, my, I asked the questions, are you slicing everything, forehand and backhand? And they're like, no, I come over the ball. But then I'm looking at it and I was like, these polys are clean. Like even this one, if you look at the mains, the notches are it's pretty clean, right? The notches aren't super deep, right? So what does that tell me? As a stringer, I'm looking at this like, okay, you either gotta be slicing everything or you're taking everything late. So a lot of it's coming inside out. So I just got a ball and I'm gonna demonstrate. So modern day forehand, if you think about it, it's gonna be like this, look. Ball strikes there, ball, ball spins to there, takes off. So the strings snap, right? The strings are snapping. Impact, snap, ball releases, right? That's how we break this, by doing this. In order to get there though, we gotta be ahead of the ball, right? Coming through early and striking it, and then ball releases, excuse me, like this like this so the the racket face is like this it impacts down and then ball releases so these strings are moving right but what i also figured out was i've had people tell me i have a two-handed backhand and i i rarely slice so i was like thinking back now okay well when i actually went out and saw these players i noticed that it was a forehand that was causing this when when they came across they weren't striking it there, square, and topping it. They were actually leaving their face open like this, therefore causing the ball to impact and spinning it sideways before it goes. So that is actually inside out. So it's like you're standing on the backhand side and trying to hit it to their backhand side. So you're running around the backhand and hitting a forehand to their backhand side. 
right? So either that or catching the ball late, but either way, the ball hits, right? And you're leaving the face open like that and finishing it up. That is the only way that it breaks like that. All right, but us as stringers, we can tell what you're doing, right? I've seen people like lately, a lot of people in the old school hitting continental, they've been breaking them down here, like way low, way low. That tells me you're jamming yourself. Like somehow you're, you're hitting in tight like this, right? And you're hitting it here. So you're not getting enough distance to the ball. That's what happens if you break down here, which you should really never do because the sweet spot's really here. Modern sweet spot's a little higher, all right? So those of you who have an extreme forehand, you break it number two or number three. So way out there, way out there, two, three, four is where you should break. So guys, us as stringers know um, what you're doing, um, how your strings are breaking, right? Because let me show you how you can test for yourself. So let's look at this pro staff here. I'm looking at the mains. I just moved the strings, right? You can do this yourself. I moved the strings down in the sweet spot. You can see there's notches there. I don't know if I can angle it better for you. This is about a quarter, 30% to maybe almost halfway done, right? So it means it's being worn out in the main. Now, if I wanted to check the cross, I would move it the other way, right? Well, see, it won't let me move it the other way because there's no notching on the cross. So the cross is clean, right? There's no notching on here. What does that tell me as your stringer? You're hitting it good. It means you're coming around the ball and early up like this because the mains are shifting this way. It's moving this way, the correct way, right? So if you were hitting it inside out, meaning the ball's like impacting here and then sliding that way, so you're taking it late. See, see the angle of my racket, right? If you're taking it late, it's going to go side. You're going to hit it side with a little side spin that goes like that. Usually people who, who hit it this way consistently are probably trying to run around that backhand or constantly hitting it late, um, meaning you're just imparting that side spin on it. Whereas if you were hitting it early, you would be up here and coming up and around it, right? Up and around it. Therefore, moving these, not these. Does that make sense to you? So guys, I just taught you about where of your strings and how I know. Uh, people also come in and say, hey, my strings never break. Um, what should I do? Well, it's like I, I tell you guys all the time. I always ask, how does it feel? If you're fine with it, hey, then let it go, keep playing. But if you really want to take control of your strings and you want it to work at the optimum levels, um, I tell people the rule of thumb is, you know, however many times you play in a week should be however many times you play, you restring in a year. So let's say once a week, once a year, twice a week, twice a year. So, I mean, that would just keep your strings fresh. Um, and more lively, right? So the strings, you're not allowing the strings to go dead. But I know a lot of people, they don't, they don't feel it too much. Um, and you know, and if it doesn't matter to you, it, you know, it really doesn't matter then because you're the one playing with it. Guys, how do you break your strings? Mains or cross? Or don't you break strings? Um, let me know, okay? I just taught you something though today. Um, us as stringers, if we know what we're doing, we know how you're breaking your strings. Um, ask your guy, like, hey, um, how am I breaking my string and why is my string breaking this way? And they'll tell you. Um, they should know. All right? So thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis.